Wait, hello. We Welcome to Sea Time, everybody. The off road show yeah. that brings you all the results. Nice. nice. And and online totally shenanigans going that make being online a good time. We'd like to say I'm thank you to Fly awesome. Racing. Man, it's like I've never done Sea Time. Please go check them out. Flyracing.com. Ever. <laughs> I think half the problem is that I'm sober. You know what I'm saying? Might, might be the problem. So. As everybody can tell right now, you're looking at the screen. I appreciate everybody that's out there. Obviously, yes, it is 8.17. This show is supposed to start at 8 o'clock. I'd give you a list of all the crap that we've already gone through, but you know what? That sounds like a broken record playing all over again, and uh, one day, hopefully, we'll get our shit together. I'd love to tell you we will. Maybe not. Um, so you can tell I have a lovely gentleman right next to me in uh, in a yellow TKO shirt. Uh, this is Rick Nolan. Rick Nolan is an awesome local uh, cross-country racer and here for TCCRA, does some TSEC races, all that kinds of fun stuff. Um, as we're talking to all the podium guys from the TKO, we have Rick here to give us uh, his little input or inputs from the race. So I think it's going to be awesome because we've got all the guys, top three from the TKO, coming on the show tonight to tell us about their experience. But we also have a fine, upstanding amateur racer as well to give us his opinion. So I think uh, that's going to be good. Rick, do you have a lot to say about the TKO when we get there? Uh, that place was awesome. That place was awesome. I think that that right there says it. We could just end the show, actually. that was That's pretty much how you wrap it up, man. That's how you have a good time. So for those of you who have never tuned in before, we really appreciate you being here. This is Seat Time. Seat Time is the online show for the off-road enthusiast. We we have a couple adult beverages because of the fact that we're all over the age of 21, but we're not going to talk about any actual ages. Um, and we're all off-road dirt biking enthusiasts. We love to go out, have a good time, be with our friends, and, uh, and brap around as much as we can. Um, seat Time, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on uh, Stitcher and iTunes. You can go to the website, seattime.co. We have all of our episodes because this is episode 96, so if you can tell. And this is not a lie. We actually have 95 ahead of this one. We don't just church it up to ha- make it make us sound better. they got all this kinds of fun stuff out there. Of course, too, seattime.bigcartel.com is where you can go find all of our merchandise. Biggest thing, what I love to, to say everybody should go get is a Seat Time koozie. It's the way to keep your pint full of awesome, nice, crisp, and cold, so you can enjoy it at any time, especially on some of those long road trips. Huh, Corey? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, water, nice and cold. Yes. And also, if you're driving, we do not want you enjoying a pint full of awesome. We would much prefer you to enjoy a pint full of water um, or any other hydrating form of beverage, which I'm appreciative and understandingly knowing that that's what you do, correct? Because you're an upstanding citizen. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I would say, say yes. That. You're definitely an upstanding citizen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely upstanding citizen. I love it. So we have you on because of the fact that you were on the podium this past weekend getting yourself a nice fancy medal at uh, the Tennessee Knockout, which was in, I'm going to try to say it, Shanakawin, Tennessee. Sequatchie. Sequatchie. I think it's better when you yeah. say it than when I try. <laughs> so I, I appreciate the fact that you actually know. Um, so you're driving right now. <laughs> you're at a Starbucks, and I really appreciate you doing that for us. Corey is driving back from, I'm not going to try to say it, from the TKO back to California with Kyle Redman. So uh, we could even have him on if we want to stick his little face in there. But uh, w- w- why we're doing this he's at a starbucks and he just did a badass job at this past weekend so we want to learn all about what brought you to be on the podium we want to know all about the race all about your highs lows and having a good time so one is kyle redmond a good traveling partner yeah he's he's an awesome traveling partner we, we were teammates last year so we we uh did a lot of that together and the, you know this year we've been doing it too but we get along really good and kind of both easy going so just kind of go and do whatever we want and as long as we get there for the race and back home we're, we're good right and uh, i guess as long as you don't do anything that other people would be like that's not keeping with the the, the thing that you're an upstanding citizen too right <laughs> that's correct yeah. yeah it's 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 all about what you consider a good time some you know so every for everybody that's different and that's understandable but we know that for you two it's riding dirt bikes and being awesome uh, you guys got to do a little bit of trials riding. Uh, you were telling me, or you wanted to. Did you guys get a chance to do that on your drive back? Yeah, we we uh, did some trials on the way out as well. We left a little early so we could, you know, just spot some rocks on the side of the road and unload the trials bikes and go hit it up. Nice. Um, rode some rode some trials the day before the race when we got there, and uh, rode today actually 
so it's it's been, it's been good. Yeah, and do you think that riding that trials before you got there, uh, or when you got to the trials training center, actually helped at all, or was the fact that it was super dry versus super wet when you actually raced? Uh, I mean, how different were those conditions? Yeah, it, it was really different. I'd been there once before, maybe like five years ago, and it was completely dry, and I'd only ridden trials, so I really, you know, didn't know what it was going to be like on a regular dirt bike and especially wet it was it was completely different but yeah just to go out and get a feel for the rocks um being wet uh it was really beneficial i think i took the trials bike out a couple times and then actually took the race bike out just for a little bit to you know get back used to that um, yeah right before the race and yeah it, it was really good nice oh, uh, some of the some of the interesting questions that we've had from different people um kind of asking you know everybody can we have a a link on our site where you can go to ask a question on seatime.co and kind of submit questions to ask the riders and things like that um uh, mark cook one of the guys that rick had rode up with was asking he he wanted to know what section you thought was the hardest um at the tko like i guess in the sense Um, of the section maybe uh like was the the first race kind of the hot lap hard was the second race you know was the main the worst like which was actually the most difficult I think the, the the long loops. I don't know the TKO one and TKO two. I think they called it were uh-huh. the hardest. Um, you know they were longer. A lot of it was just trails, but there was some pretty nasty uphills, um, like rock ledges. And then the thing that made it really hard was like the polished uh, clay. You know it was it was good for like the first guy, and then as soon as he roosted the topsoil off, it was just slick orange clay underneath. So if you weren't first, it it was really tough to get up. Nice. Yeah, uh, Alan Stillwell, we were talking with him, and he said that uh, there was a couple people, maybe even including himself, that he said were just having trouble walking around on the rocks because that they were it, they were just so, so slick uh, once all that rain kind of came down. Did you happen to notice any, any uh, spectators maybe falling down while you were actually <laughs> staying upright? We, uh, we did some course walking the day before the race, and we saw Taylor Roberts go sliding down a couple of hills, so it, <laughs> it was harder to walk than it was to ride, actually. Nice. Yeah, I can imagine, man. That seems to be the same way when you get out to some of those enduro cross tracks. We've had the ones here in uh, OKC, or not here, but a little bit north in uh, Oklahoma City. And, uh, man, just walking those is, is, I think, much more treacherous because you, like, get your ankle in there and get all twisted up. Where if you know you have your motorcycle, you might be able to ride over said huge gap between the holes. I don't know. Well, um, what did it feel like for you being on the podium at the TKO? It was pretty awesome. It was my first time there, and I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't really know anything about the format of the race or, you know, what it was going to be like riding there on a regular bike, if it was going to be dry or wet. But um, everything turned out really good, and, you know, I was I was pumped to be on the podium. I would have liked to have been a little higher up, but, right. um, you know, third third still up there so i'll take it yeah and it it sounded like uh once cody webb got out in the lead that he kind of they uh, by all accounts people were talking about how he dominated the race but it seemed like there was a little bit more back and forth with some of the placement um throughout the race for you and taylor robert um and you were kind of like kind of going back and forth kind of as you put it in the little video yo-yoing with uh with taylor robert so i mean what kind of mental pressure was that to just to try to charge, but not charge so hard that you were just not, you know, taking yourself down. It, it was tough because, you know, I, I had a decent start. I, I think I was fifth, and then I was right up to third on the first lap. And, I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm sitting back going, all right, you know, them, I'm in a good position. Cody's right there. You know, Brown's right there. Just keep at it. You know, the, you know, use your lines. You'll probably get around them. And, uh, and then I had a big mistake and didn't make it up one of the hills. And, you know, three or four guys went by me. And uh, kind of had to regroup after that and push hard to get back up into that third place spot. But, um, you know, when I got around Brown, right, right about the time me and Taylor started battling, um, I was pretty spent. I, I had pushed really hard to get to that point. I'd had a couple more crashes um, and, you know, have to rip the bike back out from the rocks. And it really taxes you when you're already tired. But, uh, you know, push really hard and I catch right up to him. You know, he'd maybe make a mistake or something, or I'd just catch him, and then I'd make another mistake, you know, and just, you know, nothing major, just, you know, slip the front end and, yeah. you know, take a bad line or, you know, something small, but it's enough to, to just send your heart rate up into that zone where 
you can't maintain and then you know then it's pretty hard to, to ride um the way you want to ride after that you know it's really hard to keep body position correct and hit the lines you want to hit and it's kind of kind of a slippery slope um from that point so <laughs> no point really intended right it. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you really got to watch that line and uh you know stay within your physical limits so i think that's kind of why we were racing the way we were because we were both you know right at that limit and we would push and then you know conserve and push and conserve and you know just kind of work in that line and you know not to mention the mistakes you know the mistakes were there were, they were there was a lot of them out there yeah Man, um, and uh, Mark, actually, one of the ones who was sending in some of the questions, he was just mentioning how Kyle Redmond, since you guys are there, he wanted to, uh, to give a shout-out to Kyle. He said, you were doing really, really good, and he's sorry to see that you broke a lever because he thought you were going to have a really <laughs> yeah. good ride. He was really bummed, you know, when he passed me on, I don't know, second lap or whatever, and was gone. Like, he, he was riding really well. I, I, I don't know if it would have had anything for Cody, maybe, if he would have been there on the start. They could have battled, but, right. yeah, big bummer when – I rode by him, just sitting on the road, <laughs> hanging his head down. You know. Yeah, he's, I can only he's imagine. Devastated. Okay, I think we were talking again with uh, Alan when it came down to bike setup and what you know kind of changes that they were making with Cody and Max. Uh, you know, there with the Stillwell team. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about bike setup to see you got you you prefaced the fact that y'all got there a little bit early, were able to ride your trials bikes. Did any of that riding cause you to change any setups that you thought? you had set up before you got there or maybe once the rain came down or once you w- walked the course and kind of what were those changes um, that you made well, to your bike, I, bike set up? I have a, a pretty good, um, you know, idea of what an extreme enduro setup should be. Um, for this race, I just took my enduro cross bike. So it was, it was enduro cross suspension all the way. And, um, you know, I, I knew that it needed to be opened up because our setups for enduro cross are so stiff these days that to, to take it through, you know, a rocky stone section, it just, it can't eat that up all day, you know? Right. So, you know, I just saw everything up a lot and just got it moving quite a bit faster. And then, um, after the, you know, after every race, actually Alan came over and made a couple more adjustments to it. So that was nice. Um, so what is that? Okay, so having learned that, um, I guess one, are you coming back next year? And two, if you do, you know, what do you what do you change mentally, physically? What do you change on the bike? All that kinds of stuff. What do you think about uh, moving forward? Yeah, the, definitely the the suspension is one of the biggest things there because if you can, if you can make a bike go straight through slippery rocks, then it makes the work for the rider a lot less. Um, so I, I'd like to build, you know, have Alan build me a, a setup specifically for that which we've already talked about um we're kind of buying the eight ball coming into this one this year but um yeah definitely that would be probably the biggest thing is just a, a setup tailor made for it and you know to train for an event like that is tough where i'm at in california you know all the rocks are dry and grippy and it doesn't matter how many times you ride dry grippy rocks it's not the same as slippery ones so it, it's kind of tough to train for that when you don't have that kind of terrain yeah, it's it's interesting that you say that because the top three guys were all West Coast guys. Um, it seems like all of you guys would train in super dry, dusty, not slippery rock conditions. Yet you guys seem to do extremely well. Uh, do you, is there yeah, well, any, anything that you guys that have thought about on that? Yeah, the, well, it, it was a lot like a normal enduro cross race. You know, the even granted the rock sections are a lot shorter in those races, but you know I think we're pretty familiar with that type of terrain um in that sense it's still different you know it, riding down a creek for you know a half mile than just you know, <laughs> for a 50 foot section but um you know i think i think we all pretty much knew what to expect yeah i'm a um i'm gonna be heading up to big sky for the amateur uh, for, for the off-road national championships uh, coming up this coming up weekend and i i'm just like super excited to see how you guys can take you know, Taylor Roberts is going to be there. I don't think that uh, Cody Webb is going to be able to make it. But uh, were you going to be able to head up there to Big Sky, or are you guys kind of just making it to California and that's enough road tripping for one month? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to make it this year. Um, it's, it's a long ways, and to be honest, I'm pretty burnt out on driving right now. So I can only I, I might just stay home and focus on enduro cross for now. Only imagine that you're super burnt out on driving right now. What is the drive time? <laughs> 
from uh, where you guys are, where, where you guys were at in Tennessee to where you're going in California? Uh, it's about 32 hours, so it's three days. Man, but it's not bad when you when you can ride in between. So that's kinda, true. Gives you, gives you something to look forward to every day. That's true. You like different terrain, like the whole way. So, uh, did you guys stop anywhere in Texas, or did you pretty much just get out of that state as quick as you could? Yeah, through um, Kansas, Arkansas, Texas, we didn't see anything on oh, the way out. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you uh, guys could have just got, yeah, nor- like Little Rock, <laughs> like Memphis, Little Rock, and Oklahoma, and all that kind of crap, huh? Yeah, we, you know, we, we weren't about to venture too far off the freeway, so, you know, we were just kind of like looking for stuff, and everything was just full of trees, and we didn't really see any rocks, so we just spent yesterday getting out to where we knew where there was rocks and rode today. Nice. Well, that's so cool, man. Well, uh, Rick, did you, you got to, you were one of the amateurs out there racing, so you got to see the course on Saturday, and you got to see Corey Gefunder and all those guys race on Sunday. So how did you, did you get to see anything cool that Corey did, something maybe that we could make fun of him for, or anything else that just, like, <laughs> comments on, you know, on, on how well he did or any of that kind of stuff? Oh, I don't know. I think just getting around that track is, 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 is crazy. Uh, that place was totally crazy, the long course was really really tough and when they tied in the extreme seconds it's over for me yeah <laughs> yeah but it was a blast watching i can't believe what these guys can do yeah they're they're pretty intense i think uh, all the like, you, anybody can make it out to an enduro cross race to watch these guys um it's super intense how fast they go and how smooth they are and some of these just absolutely just crazy technical sections so it's cool to see that you guys can kind of that you know, I think in the Supercross kind of motocross realm, they're like, oh, well, they can't really do that in – how do you blow that up? Well, this is kind of how you blow up an Enduro Cross race, and it's like these – this is what bred the Enduro Cross kind of race format is is places like this and, you know, race formats like this. So I'm glad that everybody out there is creating fun stuff. Uh, Rick and them said that they have already uh, got a cabin for next year, so they're ready to go back. Um, I'd love to make it. I think it would be a lot of fun. You're going to go back next year? Oh, I definitely plan on it. Nice. Try to get that second or third place, huh? Or that first spot. That's yeah. Goal. Well, oh, yeah, because I'm an idiot, and I said second or third. When I meant to say <laughs> second or first, but hey, man, I, I, after uh, – maybe I need to have more cider. That's probably my problem. Too much too much <laughs> water. You guys have hydrated enough for me, and now I, for y'all, I need to have a couple more ciders. Well, dude, I, I know you guys need to get back on the road and, either, if nothing else, find a, a good club. Or a hotel, you know, whatever you're doing on a Tuesday night. We're doing seat time. Or a tent. Yeah, or a tent. You guys are tent camping it? We're, yeah, we've been staying in the tent a few nights. Wow. Nice. Is that like totally broke back mountain <laughs> or? <laughs> we, uh, we we were using the one tent. It was a little small, so I had to stop at Walmart and upgrade for a bigger one. A little you, guys don't, you guys don't share like a chamois or nothing, do you? Like You're like, here's the chamois butter. Here you go. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's fun. But no, we really don't at all. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, man, you know, it It gets cold sometimes in August everywhere. <laughs> we actually, on the way out, we, we got rained out coming through Amarillo, and it was a pretty bad night. Man. Well, it was I'm, cold I'm, and wet. I'm sorry that you go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's never good. What is that? Uh, that uh, uh, what is it lost without a paddle or something where they're all like cuddled up up a creek without a paddle yeah they're all like cuddled up together without any clothes on is that is that a picture that I have to put away now with you and Redmond <laughs> yeah you can forget that <laughs> yeah never happened well dude you guys drive safe uh, keep us updated on all your racing and stuff like that we really appreciate you I know it's gotta be tough to find a Starbucks out in the middle of nowhere when you're driving through New Mexico but I uh, really can't appreciate it enough. And uh, we'll let you know when we're archived up tomorrow so you can listen in and see how awesome you sounded. For sure. Sounds good. All right, man. You guys take it easy. Drive safe. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for having Later. me on. Hell yeah. See ya. So as Steven is going to go ahead and switch us over, we're going to talk to Cody Webb really quick. We're going to have Taylor Robert on as well after the fact. Um, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about some of our awesome sponsors of Seat Time. Um, as, as you noticed when we did the intro, uh, Fly Racing, they're our title sponsor. They're an awesome, awesome supporter of Seat Time. They've been helping us from the very, very beginning, um, and they also help all the off-road racers like you guys. Um, I definitely think it's worth your time if you haven't checked out their 2014 line You know to make sure that you head over to flyracing.com and get all that kinds of stuff set up so you can go check out the new gear that they have coming out and that you guys can actually go pick up now at your dealer. 
um, if you were to want to do that. So we thank Fly Race for their support. Again, you can go check out uh, flyracing.com. And we have Cody Webb on the line. What is up, dude? Uh, nothing. Just hanging out, relaxing. Chillaxing, being all cool? Uh, trying to be. Yeah, well, after this weekend, I think that uh, you are allowed to be cool for a little while. Just to scope. Uh, yeah. I was I was looking around uh, to figure out when was the last time that we had you on Sea Time, and it was June last year. Now, I know that we've gone back and forth. You were in school, and you had night classes on Tuesday night, so that totally threw me off. I was like, where's my best friend? I was like, I can't get in touch with him. I need to see his stellar white teeth again. But no, you hated me and sc- scheduled school over us. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. It just kind of happened. I don't think it's fair. But that's okay. I want you to be educated. I, I like educated people. It took me five years, but I got a college degree. And I think if anybody takes longer than that, then that's okay too. So. It's definitely taking me longer than that. But you know what? I'll, at least I'll have a piece of paper when I'm done. Right? Well, you haven't been going full time though either. You've been kind of racing and training and all that stuff, right? Yeah, it's pretty hard to go full time when you got so much other stuff going on. Yeah, I can. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm slowly picking away at it, so that's all that counts. Yeah, no, and that's that's definitely what counts. All right, so while we have you on, obviously one of the big reasons is the fact that it was your third time to go to the TKO. It was the third time that the TKO has happened, but it was your first win. Now, you were runner-up twice to Mike Brown, who was the winner the first two times. Uh, he was not even on the podium this year, um, and you dominated. I mean, that is, you know, I was not there, but our good friend Rick Nolan, who's on the couch with us, and that's why he wants to talk is uh, he wants to be able to talk about some of his amateur experiences uh, with all the fun professional experiences that you had. So what was it like to just go out there and kick ass on essentially close to your home turf since you've been there so many times as a trials rider? Um, I'll tell you what, it was pretty pretty awesome, you know. Like, every week on there, you know, I've kind of been pretty confident after walking this year's event and uh, after all that rain, I knew it was going to be nasty. I know just how bad that place is and for being – a West Coast guy, I don't know, it must be the trials thing or something, but I, I get along pretty well when it gets pretty slippery. Yeah, um, how much of that that kind of slippery terrain have you dealt with um, in all of your, your trials background? Is that something that you guys come across a lot in your trials competitions? Um, it all depends on where we're at. Usually in Southern California, Colorado, New Mexico, we don't have any of that going on, but uh just seems like every time I've ever been to Tennessee, there's just have a torrential downpour in the middle of the day. And next thing you know, we're uh, dealing in really slick conditions. Everywhere back east is always slippery. So, uh, you know, I wasn't, I didn't grow up riding and training and practicing that stuff, but I've been around it enough. And, uh, you know, the skills I learned from trials definitely, you know, transfer over to the dirt bike. And uh, everything I learned there um, played out well. And uh, I definitely got some good clutch and throttle control from doing that my whole life. I would say that you absolutely have magnificent clutch and throttle control. Um, wherever you. wherever it came from, I, I would let you handle my clutch and throttle anytime, Cody. <laughs> Pretty sure you could do a fantastic job. Um, it, it's interesting that you were mentioning uh, kind of your trial skill background and how that really was affecting that um, because we just had a question from Mr. Zach Huberty uh, in our chat room asking, he wanted to know if you were to attribute your win more to your trial skills or more to your enduro cross skills. Um, I, I would say the way that I kind of would change it up a little bit is the fact that obviously your trials background is amazing. You've been a national trials champion a couple times and have competed at some of world events. So you have a fantastic background. But how much has added, how much have, do you think your skill set's been added to now that you've been adding all this specific enduro cross training? And, and what do you think was the bigger you know, attribution? your win <laughs> the bigger attribute uh i'd say like you know, my all the other, grammar all skills the other, apparently all the, the other guys there you know they're fantastic and drill riders mike brown has like everything he's got motocross off-road and a lot of those guys are all you know top off-road riders and uh you know i think definitely that the trials background i had was that like kind of tipping factor that gave me the overall advantage for that type of event and, uh, you know, at first, like, like maybe a year, like a year ago or for sure two years ago, I would have, it would have been a lot harder for me because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of learning as I go this whole enduro thing. And, uh, you know, a huge part of that race, I think, is physical stamina on top of, like, just your skills. I mean, 
anyone could have skills, but you know that's that with the humidity out there and all the pushing and everything that plays in fact. I think uh, you know just being in a good physical shape and uh, my trials background really played a huge role. And uh, you know everything the enduro side I'm doing is getting better and better, and that's making me a better physical shape too. So all of it together definitely was like the perfect key to make it work. But uh, I got to you know, put my thanks mostly to trials my whole life for uh, probably helping me get that win the most. Yeah, it definitely seems that when it comes down to the, the super technical stuff, w- when we were watching David Knight kind of dominate the Enduro Cross series and coming over, and then all of a sudden, who is this random guy from Poland that everybody calls Taddy? You know, but like looking him up, you're like, There's, who's this Taddy Blazuziak? And if you looked up Thaddeus Blazuziak, you kind of like could find more about him. But then like when he started gaining... Um, a little bit more notoriety and started to get closer to wins. It was like, what has this guy been doing? And is obviously trials, you know, a lot of huge uh, trials background. And I think that that a lot of people have done the same with you, um, kind of as you've been working your way up the ranks in the enduro cross world, and obviously now even to some of the extreme enduros in Europe, where you've done fantastic. Finally, getting an American on the podium, America, um, gotta love it. You know, and like you're doing now with these extreme enduros here. You know, I kind of wish that you'd have been able to ride like a last man standing to see how that would have, how that kind of, how you would have done there. So, the, I did mention too that you did the the world round at the Trials Training Center. Was there any preview with you being there earlier in the year that might have helped this past weekend? Or is it just change up enough that it's just rocks with tape around it once you get there? Yeah, it's... It's so different there, like riding from a trials bike versus enduro. Like there's no nothing I can really do that I would give me any advantage of the course. And I don't know where they're going to send us. And like they put us on so many random trails, and I don't know where I'm at half the time, even though I've been in the area a bunch. And the trails loop around everywhere. So I mean, I saw a lot of the areas I've already ridden before, but it's completely different when you're you know your mindset's completely different. I'm on my trials bike, like you know it's kind of like I can stop around and like smell the roses i'm on my way and when i'm on the enduro bike racing trying to uh, qualify to the tko i'm I, i'm not really focused on anything but the track ahead of me and make sure i'm keeping my eyes ahead and not hitting any of those slick rocks and putting my bad foot down or going down hard and yeah. ruining my chances the, speaking of your bad foot that's that was one of the questions we had gotten from uh jenna, jenna mcdonald is she wanted to know um because of that recent foot injury um had you been rehabbing it to a certain extent and kind of trying to train without injuring it that you think that this that specific kind of training was helping you for events like this where you're trying not to dab because of the fact that you know that's just gonna cause you to possibly snag your foot and things like that yeah it's i don't know the first time riding out on the bike i was so nervous for my life and like Everything I did, it was like, don't put your foot down, don't put your foot down. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, as as things were strengthening up, and, you know, I spent a while on the couch before I could even walk. And uh, before I was even really able to start walking again, I was, you know, I wanted to make sure I was in tip-top physical shape because that will also help when you get, you know, help you heal faster. And then when I get back to riding, I'll be hopefully right back where I was. So I was doing long road bike rides before I could even walk. I would just hop on my bike and take off right from the house and do 30 miles and then get back to the house and like hobble back inside. So, you know, I definitely stayed in shape in that time. And I basically, as soon as I shove my foot in my boot, I just try and cancel it all out. And, you know, when I was riding, I try and practice dragging my foot to get like, it was like a huge mental block for me. Like I had to make sure it was okay. I can use my foot, but even a couple times out in the event, um, you know, X games LA was two weeks before the TKO. Yep. And uh, midday at the TKO, I was hurting more of my foot just from, you know, it's so slippery out there. so many unexpected rocks everywhere. And uh, I definitely put my foot down a couple times and it jarred and jarred it and added to the pain. But, you know, my, my foot's strong enough. It's just a matter of doing something not, you know, I don't want to do anything stupid to totally ruin it. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, that, if you made it worse to the fact that it was, I mean, look at Stuart Baylor Jr. right now. He just had to have the bone that he had surgery on the first time 16 months ago. Just had to have that bone removed. Everybody, I mean, the, the, the thing that sucks is honestly we don't know. He could have been on the couch not even, like, waving at people like this. And he might have still had to have it removed 16 months because that navicular can die so easily. But 
at the same time, you don't know. So I'm really glad to see that you were being smart about it and trying to make a, a wicked cool comeback and uh, keep being as awesome as you are. Um, Rick, I don't know if you remember this, but during, uh, I believe it was X Games Munich, where uh, Taylor Roberts got his gold, we actually saw you, a picture of you on live on your road bike, maybe in some spandex and a moto helmet. Um, were you, do you remember that? Is that a, just a moment you've blocked out from, uh, from memory? Um, no, I remember that. I used that as motivation because I saw that track and I got, I got really excited. I'm like, well, about time they actually built an enduro cross track that's technical in the X Games. And, uh, hopefully the enduro cross guys don't hear that and get too mad at what I just said. But, uh, I won't tell them. Yeah. I, I was, uh, I was pretty bummed that, you know, I, I would look, that track looked awesome, uh, really technical and, a bunch of the other ones were super fast pace, but uh, yeah, I might have been in uh, my little leotard going on with my moto helmet, trying to, uh, you know, I was bummed, I, I was super bummed I wasn't there, that was like the most, that was the worst part about breaking my foot, you know, I just really want to be out the races and, you know, doing everything I can to put myself in the spotlight, and, uh, you know, I, since I wasn't there at the race, I figured I'd try and get there somehow on TV, and it ended up working out. No, I could tell you, if all it took for me to, I guess, essentially be put on live TV in front of millions of viewers for X Games was to show up in a leotard, essentially spandex, and a moto helmet. Dude, that would have been so easy for me. It's unfortunate because yeah. it's going to take so much more for me to be uh, to be in that kind of situation. So feel feel uh, you should feel special. I did feel pretty special that I was able to get on TV, but I was still I was still bummed that I wasn't there racing with everyone. It's true, and I have to I, I have to be called out again. Um, we, like I said, we're going to have Taylor Robert on later. I always call him Roberts because I'm an idiot. Um, and so thanks, Zach. I just wanted to say thanks. Uh, you're the only one that calls me out, and I really appreciate it. Um, you mentioned the fact that you were sad. Well, maybe not sad, but you were bummed because you missed the Munich race. It was actually a technical track. What did you think of the L.A. Enduro X track uh, versus all the other ones? Um, they basically used the moto moto x race from the night before and on the lips and takeoffs of all of the rhythm sections they put logs so it turned into log doubles for the whole track and uh some of those were you know i don't know it it made for really cool stuff on tv but for racing it turned into kind of like a follow the leader and you really had to do some crazy stuff to make passes and um you know it's it's kind of weird for me being the only two-stroke on the track. Like I have to kind of take a little bit different lines if I want to get lined up and hit a log double right out of a turn. And um, I felt like it really wasn't set up for me, but that's okay. my personal opinion. I like riding. You know, when there's all the rocks are there, that's that's when I'm happy. But obviously, when the rock <laughs> section's only like when the rock section's ten feet long, I don't. I'm not too happy about it. Yeah, and then they don't let you guys have the ability to jump it like they did for the girls i thought it was awesome when tara geiger just totally like yeah Whoa! i was like oh my god i mean i stood up my wife thought something had gone wrong with the kids like i was so excited when that happened and it doesn't hurt that she is extremely attractive so like at the same time i'm like watching this happen on tv while picturing this naked chick riding that happened in sports illustrated and it was like sensory overload you know it was just like oh my god so i mean that might have been part of it too but still go her Right? Were you guys watching at that point, like on the side, just like freaking out when it happened, or? Were you, well, we were like line, we were lining up on the gate, and they're like the huge, uh, like the, we had to like kind of step up off the tires. Yeah, and uh, that was blocking the whole thing. And then I remember we talked about it. I think the next day, and I ended up watching the main uh, on TV like the following day, and I saw that, and it was a pretty awesome hug she did. And I think. Unfortunately, like I felt like with that the way that track was laid out, that was definitely you know kind of set for her type of riding with all the jumps, and uh, you know unfortunately that thing bit her and took her down the second lap. Yep, it sure did. Yeah, she she had a, a good bit going there, uh, or a, a good a good race going there. Um, w one thing that I have a lot of questions about is your bike setup. Um, you, as we've mentioned, you this is your third year at the TKO, first year to win. Uh, past two years, you've been runner-up to Mike Brown. Um, what are some of the big bike differences that you might have been changing to, you know, have a better setup and have more confidence and things like that going into, you know, the TKO this year? Um, first, 
First off, the biggest change was definitely going from the four-stroke 350 to the two-stroke 300. You know, I pretty much grew up on two strokes my whole life on the trials bike, and I felt like the last two years I was kind of struggling with, you know, being really fatigued at the end of the race, and I was running the recluse uh, manual clutch instead of the auto, so, you know, I was fighting arm pump and, you know, toting around that four-stroke weight definitely wears down on you. And uh, we were watching videos uh, with Stillwell on the race, and, like, I was noticing Brown was just, like, he would just sit down and, like, sit down to these nasty rock gardens, just, like, flail through them. And I'm like, dude, there's no way I'd be able to do that. Like, I'd be all over the place. And, uh, you know, we kind of did a little bit of homework, and we ended up going for a softer setup. And, uh, you know, it's so rocky, you're not going to be hitting stuff high speed. And before, I was running my enduro cross setup, which, you know, I, we're going decently fast, slamming into logs as hard as we can. And uh, the TKOs requires a lot more finesse and technique technical skills with since for all the rocks so uh we went to a softer setup and it basically allowed me to uh fight fatigue near the end of the race you know and i still felt pretty fresh and they uh cut the race down to eight laps from 10 laps and you know i still easily could have done another two laps so uh you know just kind of realizing that i was being fatigued on the four stroke end of the race and uh, soften up the suspension some more i was able to uh stay a lot fresher and push that whole time nice that's pretty cool uh I, again I did get a chance to talk to Alan Stillwell, you know, from Stillwell Performance. And, you know, he's, is he, how is he, is he the main sponsor of the team that you and Max uh, Gersten are on? Um, no, he's uh, set up to be like our team manager guy. Okay. So, you know, he sets up our suspension and then comes to the races and sets up up for us. And we got all the parts in the van through him. So, okay. And it was really interesting talking to him about the suspension setup where, um, exactly what Corey had mentioned. Uh, so it's or yeah, so it sounded like, you know, that they had done some talking and all, all of you guys had done some talking about suspension setup that, you know, going in with your enduro cross setup is just not enough. Like it's, it's, you need to be much more soft and much more supple. And it sounds like once you guys did that for this year, that it really, really changed a lot around. So you, you noticed that big time, correct? Yeah, I definitely like right off the bat, I noticed a big, some like, before, I felt like I was pinging off a lot of stuff because it was pretty rigid, and this year I was just flowing right through it, and I think a lot, a huge change with the 300 two-stroke. You know, you can kind of really lug that power on the uh, on that bike, and I was just felt like I was floating through all that stuff compared to the last two years. Right. Um, I want to know, you're a West Coast guy. We were talking to, uh, to Corey about it. You know, what are you doing winning a slick race? You know, I mean, what is it with you West Coast guys on the podium? This is an East Coast Tennessee race. I, I, um, I want to be like East guy, East Coast guys, but I can't because you guys totally I'll, kicked ass. I'll, I'll be honest with how it works. I'm pretty sure, you know, with us riding the Enduro Cross Series, we all know it's on the West Coast. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we, they threw a couple of pebbles on a track and logs, and everyone was flailing everywhere. And, uh, you know, the riders, we all want to win, so we're all pushing ourselves and each other. And since we're all on the West Coast racing in Enduro Cross, you know, we pushed each other to this new level, and the tracks are getting harder and harder. Or they were, and now they're they're kind of going back and forth. But I really feel like all of us in the Enduro Cross Series have pushed each other to a new level. And uh, you know, I rode a GNCC a couple years ago, and I still, you know, I think I'm faster now and more physically prepared. But uh, at the time, I was amazed at the speed of the event and how untechnical it was. And I really didn't have any fun at all, wide open on roads and grass tracks. And I realized that's not what I enjoy. And why I enjoy Enduro Cross. But, um, you know, I think us riding the Enduro Cross series has pushed us to a new level. And when you got GNCC guys flying down roads, they're not really learning too much stuff. But, you know, the American way is pin it, grip it, and rip it. And that's why I think those Euro guys are really good in the uh, World Enduro Championship because, you know, they're riding nasty technical stuff instead yeah. of flying down roads. That's, that's very true. It's a very good point. What is it, uh, riding ruts and nailing sluts? Yeah. That's Damn. what the jeans you guys are doing, I guess. <laughs> hey, and, and works and works. So. Oh, those guys! Look at that! Like, we get to make fun of everybody. Yes, I think I think we can all fit into that category at some point in our life. It's okay. Hey, but in drill cross, we only do uh, ten or twelve laps, so you know we're not like we're like we're riding for that long. But uh, you know, I dare you to go ahead and try it and see how tired you are two laps in. I have, and I was tired two laps in. 
<laughs> so go. yes, absolutely, hey, could totally agree. <laughs> I'm tired two laps in too, so I don't feel so bad anymore. Yeah, was uh, I don't, were you doing the Enduro Cross series uh, when it was going to Guthrie, Oklahoma? You, you um, yeah, I went there. The trials. I went there last time at one point, right? Yeah, I, I think, think I only went there one time. 2010, the last year they had it. Yeah, I think you. Yeah, because and yeah, I remember Pat Smodgy being there. He was on the trials bike and then coming going back. You know, yeah. your your American arch rival, if you will, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I love how people are like, "Oh, they hate each other." Like, I really don't think they do. I think I don't think they do. No, they don't hate each other. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's actually good. You know, it's like a good, good competitive measure for me to ride against. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I enjoy having him as competition because otherwise, like, you know, it's. Give me something to push and strive for. Absolutely. Um, one of the questions we just got in the chat room was: Did you use your tr- your two speed transmission at the TKO or your normal tranny? Um, I'm running a normal tranny all this year on the uh, two strokes. So. Okay. So you were just running the that wicked two tr- that two speed tranny on the four stroke last year. Yeah, but okay. only for enduro cross. There's there's some sections at the TKO that are pretty slick. I mean, I could probably use two speed on some parts of that short course in the main event but you know it's it's always nice to, especially when it's slippery to ride up a gear so uh you know if you get stuck you're not sitting one spot spin and you kind of lug it up and get the power going good is, is that like going to the bar and like pick like trying to pick out a chick you're gonna go hit on you always just like you know bring it up a gear you're like you know what i could probably get a six but i'm going for that eight i'm stepping <laughs> yeah. it up put it up a gear yeah you know because then you can always fall back one and you're like all right i'm back at the six winner you know i know it's a it's amazing i'm married isn't it i have kids and everything I know. this that's an impressive metaphor right there. <laughs> well i'm i'm glad that you think so and i'm extremely excited about it all right so again one of the reasons i know that rick is a quiet man and he wants to he wants to listen in just as much as he doesn't want to talk and that's fine but well, one of the things that I liked having him here for is to listen in on a lot of the fact that he raced the amateur stuff on Saturday. So, Rick, I kind of want to ask you the same question. You got to watch Cody, you know, ride in all these pro sections and all these pro races and stuff like that. What's your, what was your take on, on, on watching him in these sections? Uh, I know that when I saw him come down the waterfall, he was putting his tire in places nobody else was. Yeah? Um, yeah, he was picking lines when he came down at the bottom. It was hooking other people's tires, and he would bounce it up over another rock and come out of there so smooth. And it was just just neat seeing how he picked all those lines. Huh. Okay, interesting. Um, I think that's kind of a tie-in because a lot of people were asking what was the toughest section. Um, and I wasn't there, so I want to say that this is actually referring to kind of like the waterfall and uh, the ledge and some of the creeks and things like that. So, like the section he's mentioned in the waterfall, you know, was that one of the tougher sections or maybe uh, the ledge uh, and in what do you it, obviously is that just all trial stuff like what he's talking about like the way that you were able to just kind of work your way up there like unlike anybody else yeah i mean that's a lot of the trials is like what i tell people when uh you know i'm riding with them and i want to explain what i'm doing i usually pick points where i want my tires to be where i know like it's, if it's going to be a stable rock or it's going to be traction on it and uh you know i aim I look ahead to a certain point when I get to that point and I look ahead to where I want to go next. So when I'm walking, when I was walking down that waterfall, that was definitely a really tough spot of the course. And, uh, you know, I'm planning ahead and I want to be on top of the big rocks. I don't want to be falling in the cracks. Cause that's going to be, that's, you know, you're going to be bending rotors and knocking your chain off, taking it out of the race. So I pick points where I'm staying on top of the rocks. And, uh, you know, I'm luckily I got pretty long legs. So that helps with, uh, yeah. stick my foot out there and saving myself if I get messed up. But, uh, I plan on looking ahead, knowing where I want to go, and uh, I try and stay out of the holes the most I can. Uh, George from Florida actually mentioned how uh, long your legs are. Um, do you think that he's coming on to you at all, or is that just uh, the fact that he noticed that your legs are really long? <laughs> um, I look at pictures of myself on the bike, and I, I'm just wondering why I chose dirt bikes when I could have been like a baseball player and actually <laughs> making money. <laughs> You're like... Man, look how good I would look if I had muscles. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I love it. That's okay. You know, you're you're nowhere. You're, you're definitely not more goofy looking than I am. So we have that going for us. I think. Thanks. Yeah, that's this is about as exciting. As, but your teeth way better looking than mine. I have to say. Yeah. That that's what's but so I'm, fun I'm about not, this. I'm missing out up here. You know. I'm oh. Like, 
Yeah, you cannot offer anybody a mustache ride. So no, cannot. Yeah, your Saturday nights, I can promise you, were nowhere near as exciting as mine. <laughs> Unless I drink some chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then, then you're like, then it, then it's almost like, well, hmm, I was gonna say something that's really not appropriate, and that's for this show, so you know it's not appropriate. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just send us some pictures of you with chocolate milk, and maybe I'll uh, have too many ciders one night and actually come out with what I was going to say. Get a nice emoji going, or yeah. one of those, uh, meme, a yeah. nice meme going on. Yeah, those. Not, yeah, I'll, I'll make a little meme for you when uh, when I'm using my own account and not something that could uh, be traced too far back, if you will. Um, well, cool, dude. I know we got Taylor Robert coming up. We're going to talk to him about his second place finish and how he kept trying to keep your dust in sight, but unfortunately there was too much water for dust. And you totally dominated. So way to go, way to go on kicking ass, um, getting your win. I know third time's a charm, cliche, but bam, there it is. You got it. Um, I know people. The, the more and more you've been performing on these betas, and you and Max Gersten, more people are asking about these bikes. They want to ride them. They want to know more about them. They want to know more about your setup. So keep being vocal. I think about these bikes and what you're doing to them because people really do ask a lot of questions and want to know more. So. Congrats on being on a bike that obviously you're rocking it on, and uh, hopefully we get to keep, talk to you soon. It's not just about like school, and it's about you winning some more, eh? Yeah. You think? All right, so Ontario, well, you ready? Of course, I love you. That's why I'm going to school, so then I'm ready after I'm done winning. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Well, um, cool. Good luck, uh, Ontario. Right, uh, September twenty first. Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. I should know this kind of stuff, but hey. I rely on you guys that have managers and people that are in control of your lives. To I barely stuff. knew it myself. So. Yeah, you just agreed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, yep, <laughs> sounds good. All right, cool. We appreciate your time. Remember, enjoy a pint full of awesome seat time koozie. You should get one. I, you know I'm, how do I get one? Seattime.bigcartel.com. All right, I got you. Bam. No. Text it to me. Yeah, oh, I will. And uh, I'm still waiting on my jersey. The first time we were on. I was supposed to get a jersey. You see these hanging up? Yeah. Those are guys that follow through with what they say they're going to do. Mine could be up there somewhere. Someday. How about a number plate? Someday. That's my number plate. What up? 23A. That's like the first and last time I'll ever be a double A rider in Texas again. (laughs) You will always be faster than me, I promise, Mr. Cody Webb. We'll see. Maybe. All right. Have fun out there and uh, keep being awesome, dude. Thanks, guys. Later. All right. So, of course, we cannot thank Mr. Cody Webb enough. Was that not a great little interview? That was great. Yes. I like, yeah, I liked watching him ride a lot. I bet, dude. I think that that had to be really, really cool. I think it's interesting we got to, to talk a little bit about the fact of his suspension setup. Now, that was something that Alan and I talked with, um, and it just blew my mind, some of the, the, the little things that they're kind of going into, and going all the way into the valves and changing – you know, the shim stack and all that kind of stuff to really get the suspension to perform different. I think it's just, but that's where the level of this racing is at now. And those are the kind of the little changes they need to make. So I guess it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I wish I'd have known more about my suspension. I should yeah, like some off. <laughs> I just wanted to not have clickers and have them be a little bit easier to use. I'll tell you what made the biggest difference for me was them tires. I put some new tires on for the first time. Yeah? Uh, different this is fir- your first new tires ever? No, no, no. New new kind of tire that ah I okay and i ran some kenda triples and them things pulled me through the rocks when i never thought i was nice going so they're like a really uh like a, a like a rubbery diam di- uh, durometer the knobbies are motocross style but the rubber on it is trials rubber so oh. it, it, it felt really good in the rock sticky rubber yeah i'm anxious to see how they're gonna work next weekend Nice. Oh, you're going to use them next weekend? Oh, yeah. They're you, still on there. You're not changing them, are you? Uh, no. It's going to be horrible. It's a dust race. Man. It's, gonna, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to suck. It's going to be like, oh, I'd love a trials tire in the dust. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. So the cute guy that you guys can't see yet, even though you know I would like to say that about myself, it's unfortunately not me. It is Mr. Taylor Robert. Not with an S because I screw it up every time. Robert, I've already been called out on this show for screwing up your last name again. I just have to apologize now that we have you on. I'm so sorry that I keep doing that. All right, no worries. Yeah. As long, you're, as, long as you get it right sometime. <laughs> but like one one out of ten? <laughs> it's like, yes. That's a story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, so we have now talked with Corey Grafunder, who stopped at a Starbucks in, on, in Gallup, New Mexico, to be able to talk on Sea Time. And then, of course, we've got Cody Webb, 
uh, from this past weekend who won the TKO. Corey Grafunder was uh, third. And you, Mr. Taylor Robert, in third or second? Wow. In second at the TKO. Uh, man, is this your first time at the TKO? This is my first time at the TKO. Okay. So we had two first timers on the podium this past weekend. It took Cody Webb three times to get first place. He was runner up two years behind Mike Brown. Mike Brown's nowhere in sight on this podium. So what was it about you and Mr. Corey Grafunder that just you guys were able to come in with your guns swinging? Um, I don't know. I mean, Corey and I have done all the the tough enduros so far this year in the United States. Um, we both did King of Motos. I got third there, but Corey wasn't third most of the race. I passed him on the second loop uh, when he had some bike issues. And then uh, at the last lock standing, Corey and I actually had a really close battle. He... Uh, we, I was ahead of him on the, the first gnarly loop there, and he, he passed me on the downhill. Our bikes actually got wedged together, and, and then uh, we got him unwedged, and there was a like a 15-foot drop, and he grabbed his bike, and when he grabbed it, he grabbed the electric start and just launched it down the hill. <laughs> awesome. And uh, so he actually beat me that loop because that was about a quarter mile from the finish. His bike was at the bottom about 30 seconds before mine was. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would that's the kind of video footage that we need that's like we got a couple uh matt crouch was sending us some videos and we posted a couple of them we got one of you sliding down uh the hill so there was like a big downhill and then a like left excuse me like a one 180 left hand turn where you go into the creek and you yeah. like came down that hill all kinds of cattywampus and fell over or whatever and then you just like dragged your bike down like between <laughs> between the steep hill and uh in the creek, it was awesome to watch you do that. By the way, was uh yeah, I think that was on the top of the race. Um, I got I got all out of shape there, uh, and my first lap of the race was terrible this weekend. In well, in the final, um, I wrecked like right before that. I was in third, and then uh, I wrecked right before that. Dropped back to I don't know maybe fifth, and then uh, had that little little bobble there where I ended up jumping down into the creek and my bike was still up on the ridge so I had to drag it down into the creek and it was all <laughs> yeah, back. That's what, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so uh, that was a little unfortunate but I mean, I was, it was so gnarly and tough. I was to come back and uh, and mix it up with those guys and I mean, obviously Brownie's a gnarly dude and uh, he pulled off with two laps to go because he said he was just gassed. Well, I did okay, man. You know what sucks is I just didn't realize that that's how that that's how far back he was. I saw in the results that he wasn't, you know, really f that that, you know, I guess up there if you will. But uh, I didn't realize that he was so gassed that he pulled off. I know that he mentioned that he had been uh, in Baja doing a lot of Baja testing for the Baja 1000, and I can only imagine that that kind of riding would super gas you out coming into something where you you probably need to be pretty darn fresh for. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean. Uh... This was by far the most physically exerting race I've I've done. I mean, uh, the first loop, the knockout one was gnarly. I mean, I've and I, I have never ridden there before, and I've hardly ridden any off road on the East Coast. I've ridden a little bit of motocross back there, but uh, not really any off road. And it was kind of like Germany ISD last year, but just on an extreme scale because it is an extreme enduro. And right. I was riding terrible. I was riding terrible in the beginning of the day. I mean, I got like seventh in hot laps, ninth in the first knockout, and then second knockout, I decided I would probably actually try and maybe learn how to ride a little bit, and I got third in that one. So I progressively got better throughout the day, but that first one was gnarly. I mean, they had this double step ledge that there was like 10 dudes stuck on it at once, and I'm sitting there standing next to my bike in first gear wide open trying to get up the thing, and then my bike's <laughs> steaming in my face. I mean, this is the first time in a race I've ever just stopped and sat there for about 30 seconds, let my bike cool down, took like 10 deep breaths, and I was like, all right, I think it's time to go again. Wow, that's crazy to hear that you guys talk about it like that. I mean, I I guess what's what, I remember seeing that kind of stuff at Last Man Standing um, here in uh, North Texas when they used to still have that, the Red Bull Last Man Standing, but it's great to hear, I mean... Not for me, because I'm not going to do it, because it's going to break my bike, but uh, it's great to hear that, in a sense of extreme enduros, that we've got something that's really testing you guys that much, and uh, do you think that you have any form of a usable rear tire still on your bike? Yeah, my tire's good. I was uh, I was running a, a really good tire, um, and uh, Dunlop actually makes some, some pretty sweet tires for us now, and 
I ran that thing, and my my tire was awesome. I don't think I would have done as well if I had just ran a regular like MX fifty one or something. So you got factory Dunlops like special yeah. Dunlops? Yeah, they're just they're just a really soft compound, but they. Uh, I mean, all the guys that race in Duracross have them, and uh, they definitely they definitely help out on that slippery stuff. Yeah, so I mean, it's really just like a really uh, like lower durometer tire, so it's like extremely sticky. But kind of exactly. has more knobs of a traditional, so it's 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 uh, it's technically not tr- cheating the system because it's the durometer of a trials tire, but it's not the knobby tread pattern of one. Exactly. Hey, uh, it's just it's semantic, sure, but I gotta ask the question. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. It's just like it's just like Supercross. I mean, none of those guys run a oh yeah a yeah. stock tire. So yeah, you they uh, every one of them has a special tire for Supercross and motocross so Absolutely. now it's kind of cool that that off-road is getting a little bit of recognition that uh you know we're getting cool stuff oh did you guys uh did you got how much did you did you cut your tires any did you like kind of you know try to find a specific pattern that you wanted in the tire or did you just kind of put that that factory dunlop on and, and run it as it came um i just put that that dunlop on on the rear um i to be honest with you i just ran my enduro cross bike my my so your suspension went, must have sucked compared to what we talked about with Cody and Corey. Yeah, I mean, I was I was actually watching your guys' interviews with with Corey and, and Cody, and um, and you're going to yeah, call they, Alan Stillwell and get your suspension done, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, no, but, but to be honest, my stuff was good. Like, I don't run my stuff super stiff anyway because I'm like a little bit on the lighter side than most guys. I only weigh 150 pounds, so I can get away with a little bit lighter setup, and like I actually felt really good. Um, out there and then uh it was uh, my bike literally straight from x games um eric Pernard, the guy that you know yep. helps us with uh indoor cross and x games yep. and promotes the the tko he brought my bike from x games to the tko and i didn't touch it at all so i just run what i brung <laughs> That's a, that's a we were, as we were talking about cliche titles uh, or uh, cliche sayings. Mine was uh, what is uh, what did I I don't know, railing uh, ri- riding ruts and nailing sluts. That was that was my cliche uh, my cliche saying for the show. <laughs> I want to use that as a show title, but I mean like you want to talk about you know that's got to be really far back in the show. So that way the people that stop listening after ten minutes don't realize that we actually get pretty wide open here. Towards the end of the show, you know. <laughs> All right, I, I think that should be your like your post show saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like enjoy a pie full of awesome and make sure that you ride ruts and nail sluts. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, now I'm in trouble with <laughs> just about everybody. Um, so uh, Zach Huberty was also asking about you and drilling bibs. Did you guys do? I mean, it sounds like you personally probably didn't do that because of the fact that you rode it as you brought it. Ride what you brought. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't. I oh. didn't. It was asking about drilling holes in your bibs. Now, if you, I guess, obviously, it doesn't sound like you did that for the TKO because you rode what you brought. But is that something that you have done for enduro cross? No, I actually run tire balls in enduro cross. Okay. So, um, I run mooses in works and say Big Sky this weekend. I'll run a moose front and rear. But uh, in enduro cross, I run tire balls because they're lighter and. I can, we can get them, you know, pretty soft. You, you can you can put less tire balls in there than are recommended, and then run them at like eight psi, and you get a pretty squishy tire. That's because you enjoy breaking the law, right? Exactly. And you're like, dude, I don't rules don't apply to me. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, or you could always have like a uh, what is it? Uh, like a you could always you okay. It's like so. It's Saturday night. I'm working or Friday night. I'm working on my bike. I wanna I wanna feel dangerous. You could work on your bike as Taylor Roberts, plural, and then that way it's kind of like ah when Taylor Robert rides the bike. You know it's it has this whole like double thing going. I would think that would be a lot. You could bike bipolar, and that All way right. I I don't really know who I'm talking to because I'm probably gonna screw your name up anyway. Yeah, I think I think you already lost me actually. That's okay. I I've really got no idea what I'm talking about. So. <laughs> Was there practice at the TKO, or did you guys really just get a track walk for what was it, the four different sections? I mean, um, yeah, I mean it was pretty much just track walk, um, but we still. Thinking about what's going on, we might be calling him back really quick because of the fact that he might be like, 
ooh, 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 ooh. So, I think one of the questions that I have too that I want to ask that came from the chat room was the fact that they were wondering if uh, Taylor Robert had beer bottles uh, above his fireplace or hot sauce bottles. Um, and I was like, we'll get them up here in a second and figure it out. I think that's pretty interesting though that somebody would notice that. You can see him there, kind of in that still picture. Uh, but we'll get it. We'll get it sorted. You there? Are we back? Hey, we're back. So the question was, um, are those beer bottles in the background above your fireplace, maybe, or are those hot sauce bottles? Oh, those are all. Uh, those are all my my podium champagne bottles. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's yep. a lot, by the way. P.S. Yeah, I got. I got a. Uh, most of them are works, and then I'm getting a pretty good collection of Enduro Cross ones, and then select ones from like Argentina and stuff like that. Agreed. Well, we didn't talk to you after you won the gold in Munich. We talked to you before. Um, and then, obviously, because of the fact that you were on the show, you did such a fantastic job in Munich. Um, you know, so you, go, yeah, yeah. go us. I mean, I think we motivated you to be awesome. How fantastic was that? And what was it like being an X Games gold medalist in a whole other country? I mean, it was really cool. Obviously, I would have liked to back it up at LA, but I just made a silly little mistake there. But uh, no, Germany was amazing. The track was super technical, but. At the same time, it was kind of my style. Like it had deep ruts, moto style, um, and when it, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty adaptable as far as like Brownie's a really good rider when it's super fast and you can just kind of charge every obstacle. And you got Taddy who's kind of good all the time. But I think when there's really technical stuff, sometimes Taddy gets flustered, which I think is kind of what happened in Germany. And then uh, I. I like to consider myself more of like an all-around rider, so the track was really technical, but it had some moto stuff, some trialsy stuff, and I was able to just put all my skills together and come away with a gold medal. And then since then, it's been, I guess you could say, like a little bit life-changing as far as like everywhere I go, I get introduced as X Games gold medalist. Yes, yes. I mean, I would have introduced you that way, but I knew that you were like you were over it. You know, you're like, yes, guys, I'm more than just that. So you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beef up your ego any more than it already has. I guess <laughs> you know, I can already tell you got a little chip on your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. You're awesome. You're not doing anything crazy. How old are you, Mr. Robert? Somebody was just asking that. I just turned 23. Nice. So you're old enough to have that beer that you had in What If? Oh yes. Yes, you I were. was 20, I was 21 then, so I was good. And you were in Mexico, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I was in New Mexico. You only have to be 18. Nice. See, you you had it for years, years. Well, are you guys working on any uh, new moto films or anything like that? Is that kind of been in the works? Yeah, we uh, we actually just me and Cody and Kyle Redman did a Moto Five shoot in Hurricane Utah, and I might be a little biased because I was in it, but I think it'll be one of the most epic film shoots that we've done, especially in the Moto series. So. My one for Moto Four was cool just because it was different. It was in the vineyard. Yeah. But uh, it didn't like. I like going fast. And I like hitting big jumps. Don't get me wrong. But I also like technical riding, and that that film shoot didn't show any of my technical skills. Where this, um, I feel like Cody, Kyle, and I kind of rewrote the term free riding on a dirt bike because when you think free riding, you just think of like twitch and yeah, being in the hills. Yeah, twitch and Hanson jumping in the hills, you know, but. Uh, no, we uh, we were out we were out free riding, but it was a completely different type of free riding. We kind of we took some mountain bike inspiration and we made some Red Bull Rampage lines, and then found the absolutely biggest drop we could and blew out some wheels, and then uh, found like this huge uh, rock bowl that was I don't know thirty feet tall and and fifty feet in diameter, and we all three of us rode the bowl, and it was pretty cool stuff like that. That's awesome. Man, I wish that I could ride a motorcycle well enough that people would want to video it. <laughs> I think if I could do that, it would be life-altering. It is It is funny how once the video camera comes out, especially when you have a crew like me and Cody and Kyle where we're all kind of pushing each other, um, once the video camera comes out, like our skills get better or we just try bigger stuff because we want to look cool. Yes. Now, I, I, I totally understand that because you're like, not only are you pressured by the camera to do something cool, but then it's like, you know, Kyle might have gone and done something that made you look not as cool. So then you're like, oh, oh, I got it. And then it's just like a pinball effect from there. Yeah. 
Well, and I don't know if you guys saw the the picture of the drop off that I did for that shoot, um, but it was pretty. Oh, I think, insane. Yeah, I think I saw it on Facebook. Yeah, we have to go find that though and look at it. Yeah, it's it, it's on Facebook and Instagram. But anyways, there was this massive drop we found the first day we were there, and Kyle and Cody wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. And I was like, kind of on the fence. I was like, I was like, yeah, I think it looks possible, but we, we I mean, it'd be really sketchy. So the second day we come back. And uh, they're like, yeah, the light's not right. Let's just do it tomorrow morning. So then third day comes around tomorrow morning, and we're there sitting on top of this ledge. It's, you know, it's like 30, 35 feet down, and then you have to jump out about 30 feet too. And uh, I was like, it was really windy. I was like, man, I, I really don't want to hit it right now. Like, And this was the week before we were going to go to Brazil for X Games. <laughs> I was like, man, I just, I was like, it's windy. I don't want to get hurt. Like, let's just let's just nix this one and the film guys were totally cool they're like yeah we understand we don't want you to get hurt um and uh we'll just we'll do some other shots and we'll call it a day because that was the last day we were going to shoot so then like kyle and cody just start doing these insane splatters and and ups and uh i didn't even want to try them one because i had set my bike up for the drop like i stiffened everything up i went all the way in on compression <laughs> rebound bottom out resistance like I went stiff on everything, so my bike wasn't handling real good, and these guys were doing just some insane technical lines, and they had me stand in every one of the shots just to show how big they were. So I'm like standing up against this wall with my hand up, so my hand's like, I don't know, I'm like seven and a half, eight feet where the top of my hand is, and they're jumping, they're splattering up above me, and uh, what do you guys got going on there? I don't know, but I think my house is on fire. Uh, you should probably just worry about that later. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not dead, so I don't know. My wife's here, the kids are here. I guess they're gonna figure it out. <laughs> you can't you can't run a serious show in a house. You know, it's whatever. Uh. Well, anyway, I don't know, I was... but I did just hear, "Damn it, Kalen!" So that would be my wife uh, yelling <laughs> at a child. So apparently, something uh, went wrong. Nice. Yeah. So I don't know if we could ignore it. It's probably best. But if not, all right. Well, I'll, we'll just, go, I'll just keep going with my story. Yeah. So we'll I'm, kill I'm standing in all these shots, jump and these guys are jump, yeah. jumping over the top of me. And uh, while I'm standing in these shots, I can see that drop off. And I was like, "Man, I really don't want to be standing in like the last five shots of the movie." <laughs> yeah. So, I, so I didn't the, ride at all. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the wind had died down. We went back there, and uh, I sacked up and hit this drop, and it it went as good as it could have gone i just it was so gnarly and the landing was not ideal that i blew out six spokes in the rear and two in the front wow whoa yeah that's serious but i uh, know that if you guys get a chance i would definitely check it out there's all kinds of different right i mean there's like 300 foot dunes there that we're jumping off of and then we're doing these ridge lines like full-on red bull rampage dropping down these ridges and it's pretty cool Nice. Speaking of really cool land and lots of stuff going on, we actually have one of the promoters from Big Sky in the chat room, and he is completely hounding me to hound you, and he is like, you need to officially call him out and ask him if he's going to Big Sky or not. So apparently this is me officially calling you out and asking you if you're going to go to Big Sky or not. I would say yes, I am, because... Uh... My biggest issue was getting a ride up there, and I didn't know how I was going to feel after this weekend because I did, uh, I actually did a Trials National, and then I did uh, LAX Games, and then the Works Race, and then Tennessee Knockout, all those races in a row, and then Big Skies this weekend, and I wasn't sure if I was going to feel up to it, but I'm feeling good this week, and uh, I talked my dad into driving up there with me, so we're going to jam out Thursday night and do the old... Uh, father son race team nice that's awesome i think if you're gonna go to what is not just uh, national championships for guys like yourself who are professionals um at riding dirt bikes but it, when it's like the first ever official national amateur uh you know national championships i think i think you kind of have to do it as a father son team so that's probably the way you should do it so I yeah think, it should be uh, fun awesome. and uh I know my we went out, we actually went snowboarding at Big Sky this winter, so I really like that place. And my dad's from Montana, so might even get some uh, some of his some of his local boys to get out there and throw beer bottles at people. Hey, <laughs> what we need? Okay, what I we're friends on Facebook, so you have to actually use. We have to like be friends. You have to act like my friend for once in your life, 
and go look at my wall. And I posted something from Pink Bike. Pink Bike. It's called Heckler's Rock. It's from Crankworks this past weekend uh, in okay. British Columbia in Whistler. And it is what I want to create at races like this. The fact that they, I mean, it's no shirts on the rock. That is the rule. Okay, and it's serious. It's like there's dudes with chainsaws out there, obviously without chains. But I've already asked Joe Miller if I can borrow a chainsaw without a chain, because if he gives it to me with the chain, I'll do something stupid. We don't want that. Uh, we got cowbells coming. We got megaphones coming. I'm telling you, dude, Heckler's Rock will be recreated at Big Sky. So you can only imagine that if you got some Montana boys coming, hook them up with me. I'm gonna need an extra <laughs> pair of overalls because shit's gonna get crazy. All right, okay. I like it. Yeah, no, you will hear me from the start when you're starting your bike. Like, it's going to be, that's crazy. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm going to be filming the whole time, too, so God only knows what we're going to get out of this. I don't know. All right, I can't wait. Yeah, but what's going to be cool, though, is we're going to be doing uh, live shows on Saturday evening when you guys, when uh, kind of like we're doing the autograph session. We're going to also be doing some interviews. Which would be neat, so that way we can kind of kind of do like we're doing here at Seat Time, kind of sit down with all you guys as you're going. We're you know one by one as y'all are doing autograph sessions and stuff, and then of course yeah. we're going to be doing a post race show on Sunday night after the racing, um, so that okay. way we can talk with everybody live um, with uh, Tony from Pit Pass Radio, uh, the Wise Co guy. He's going to be out yeah. there. Him and I are going to sit down and talk about all the racing. Have it, all the guys who did really well. So if you can bring some of the awesome luck you've had recently. Um, to Big Sky, then you'll be sitting down talking with us in person, not just over Skype. I hope I get to talk to you in person. Then it'll be it'll you you will have very you will have a hard time holding back your feelings. <laughs> I'm just saying, because you're gonna see this in person. I mean, oh boy, yeah. As we've already as we've it's already come up a couple times. I can offer off mustache rides as while you can't. So we'll do it. Are you going to be giving out rides? I mean, yes. All right. <laughs> I want to say no, but in reality, we all know it's going to happen. So, <laughs> I love it. So I'm excited that you're going to be coming to Big Sky. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to it. I think you've got a great shot. This will be your first time to that race as well, right? Yep. I'm just a rookie at everything this year. Man, I know. Except being awesome. We already knew you were good at that, buddy. <laughs> so, okay. Going back to TKO next year? I think so. I mean, as long as I can logistically work it out, it's a little... It's a little jog from my house, but yeah. uh, I, uh, I I'd definitely like to do it again next year. And I had a good time. I mean, it was it was completely different from anything that I ride at back home. I mean, I know Cody. We all we all live on the West Coast. The guys that were on the podium, but Cody, I think, had a little bit of advantage being an amazing trials rider and probably riding there since he was 11, 12 years old. Wow. So uh, that's why, uh, like like I said earlier, I kind of struggled in the beginning of the day, and then I I figured it out and. And started doing a lot better, but uh, yeah, I want to go back next year, and hopefully, it doesn't take me three years to get up on the top of the box. Right, I can totally, I can totally contest with that. So, uh, I guess I was about to ask, what are you going to change for next year? But I think the more relevant question, honestly, or prevalent question, because of the fact that it kind of was like so touch and go with Kawasaki coming into this year for 2013. Have you heard anything about 2014 and bikes and rides and teams and stuff like that for yourself? I haven't. I heard uh, Kawasaki told me that they want to continue the program next year and pretty much keep it the same. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that's all I've really heard. They haven't told me any details or anything like that. And uh, Yeah, that's nice. all I got. Hey, that's... It's good enough at this point. The only thing you'd like to add to it is you'd like to talk to Stillwell Performance and have them do your suspension. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, no, Alan's a good guy, and he lives right down the street from me. Um, so he might do your but, suspension even though he's not doing your suspension? No, the, the guys at TBT do my suspension. Johnny Johnny Wiseman is is uh, the guy that does my suspension, and he's I've known Johnny since I was like 14 years old. So he actually – Johnny lives about 30 minutes from me. And uh, he does all the Arizona TBT stuff, so right. I'm uh, I'm pretty tight with Johnny, and he was my mechanic last year, and he's been Destry's mechanic for the last like eight years before that. So uh, we go we go way back, and I'm I'm happy with my stuff. Dig it, yeah, no, for sure, I understand that, and it's 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 obviously been working for you. It's not like that's like the one thing holding you back. You know what I mean? Not that anything's <laughs> yeah. holding you back. Man, I'm just digging you a hole. Actually, I'm digging me a hole. <laughs> Whatever. As my shirt says. Yeah. 
I will not calm down. You leave me out of this. So I'm going to give Rick his his uh, his stage again because as we were telling everybody else, we liked I, I, Rick was there this past weekend racing the amateur race. You were out there doing the pro race. Was there anything out there that you saw from Taylor Robert, not plural, um, that that really impressed you or something maybe that he could work on? I don't know. I mean, we could nitpick it if you want. Oh no, I just saw a lot of great riding. Uh, definitely yeah. saw a bunch of great riding come out of this guy. So he was on. Were you on a two fifty or four fifty? I want to say two fifty, but yeah, four fifty. I, I would have died on a four fifty. <laughs> yeah, just like Brown on his three fifty. Ooh, yeah, oh, that was that was a juicy one. Excuse me. So, <laughs> it besides maybe putting him on a two stroke, you know, what do you think that that would have done for him? Uh, I'm uh, no opinion. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think uh, it's a two stroke track. If I I had my choice. Like a choice? Yeah. And what about you? I mean, if you if Kawasaki had a two-stroke and you had a choice, if you had actually had a real choice to choose on what bike, what bike, would you have chosen a two-stroke or stayed on the, the 254 stroke? You know, I don't know. I, I To be honest with you, I really like my 250F, and I, I feel like I can pretty much do anything with it. Obviously, it runs a little bit hotter than like a two-stroke, but I feel like I can keep up with those guys on it. Um, maybe if I could get a wide ratio six-speed transmission in that thing, right. that would be pretty cool. Um, but you know, I've never, the only two stroke that I've ever really spent a lot of time on is a Honda CR 125. Um, and then, uh, that was the only like two stroke big bike I spent a lot of time on. After that, I went to 250Fs and I've ridden 250Fs and 450s pretty much my whole big bike career. Wow. And, uh, I think it would be cool. Sorry, I got flies in my house, but, uh, I think it would be cool. Clean your lady quit on you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> If a uh, a Japanese company like Kawasaki made a, a two stroke three hundred, I mean, I would definitely be interested in trying it. <laughs> yeah, but it probably not, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. Yeah, uh, Euros have just got those things dialed right now for sure, man. But uh, no, I think I, I think what would be sweet is a a big bore two DF with a wide speed or a uh, a six speed wide ratio transmission. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a good time. Yeah. I think I'd be in. I would totally be in. Well, cool. We're going to see it. Big Sky, uh, Enduro Cross, Ontario, September 21st. Going to be there? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. And then uh, ISDE after that, right? I mean, you, that shoot, you must be catching a flight and heading straight to six days. Exactly. I, uh, I Ontario, California, Saturday night, and then I fly out from LAX Sunday morning to go to Sardinia. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Horrible. Yeah, well, the uh, and my schedule actually gets pretty gnarly right around then because I'm doing that. So I'll be in Italy for two weeks, and I come back, have an enduro cross race in Denver, and then the weekend after that, I'm going to Ecuador for an extreme enduro, and I come back, have an enduro cross race in uh, Everett, and then as soon as I come back from that, I'm going down and pre-running for the Baja 1000, <laughs> and then and then I have Boise enduro cross, and then I go back down to Mexico and ra- do more pre-running, and then race the Baja 1000, and then the weekend after that's Vegas enduro cross. Hmm, that sounds awesome, and so I got downright crazy. I, I got to ride my dirt bike a couple times between now and December. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it still. I really do. I do. <laughs> that's a lot of traveling, man. That's a lot of traveling. Yeah, no, I like it, and uh, the one thing I really like is. Being able to do everything, like I feel like I'm a pretty versatile rider, so I can do TKO and then you know go down and do Baja and then a works race and Big Sky and Enduro Cross and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, because I like I like mixing it up and having fun. Which you have been, and we can't say that we're not excited for you to do it because I love seeing you in the podium. You're a an awesome little 23 year old that's kicking ass riding dirt bikes, and if nothing else, you're having a good time and. I think it's it's it really shows. So congratulations on doing so good. So you know, so recently with so many different events, I think you're a versatile rider. You know, not that not that I'm biased, but <laughs> you're pretty awesome. So. All right, Thank anything you. else for him, Rick? Uh, just keep up the good work. All right, keep up the good work, dude. <laughs> and I uh, really appreciate your time. I know uh, you've been on Sea Time a couple times. We obviously really really appreciate that. It's uh, great having you on. If we weren't for you guys, we couldn't do stuff like this. So we appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be on here, and uh, it's always a good time. All right, keep those champagne bottles growing, okay? All right, I will. <laughs> All right, dude, take it easy. You have a good night. See ya. Light up. 
All right, so now we are pretty much wrapping up. We're going to close out here with Taylor Robert and then not plural, like I got it correct. What? what? So, but what you guys have been watching is Seat Time. We're sponsored by Fly Racing and Power Sport Graphics. Now, Power Sport Graphics, you guys can go and learn a lot more about them at ridepg.com. Best part is, if you want to save yourself 10% off of any order that you make, either off their website or call them, you can use the discount code Seat Time and save yourself that 10%. You can even save more if you do the ready to ship option. And then, of course, they have. Same day shipping if you order before 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, all of those are fantastic options if you're looking to a save money or get your graphics done very very quickly. Um, and then if, if none of those are options in that sense, you call them up and be like, I want some custom stuff. I don't care what it costs, and they're gonna make you some bad a graphics for your motorcycle. Um, we can't thank them enough for their supported seat time. Uh, it's been it's been fun, and uh, hopefully it's uh, 2014. I keep I keep saying that we have a new sponsor that I want to talk about, and we do. It's just like. When stuff's not official, it's not official, and you can't uh, talk about it too much. But if anything, it's going to definitely tie in extremely well with uh, the way that we do things here at Seat Time. Always enjoying a pint full of awesome. So again, what is this? Seat Time. Seat Time is uh, the website is seattime.co. It's where you can go find um, all the press releases that's going on about the shows, all the archives of the show. You can uh, find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Seat Time. That's just where we like to talk, have fun, share all kinds of fun news. Seat Time, uh, we're on Twitter, twitter.com slash Seat Time underscore CO. Um, that is pretty much the most public platform we have. Tons of fun, all kinds of good stuff out there. And, uh, and then, of course, Instagram is just Seat Time. You can find us on YouTube, search for Seat Time. All kinds of fun stuff out there uh, where you can find Seat Time. Of course, Stitcher and iTunes as well, which is great if you just want to listen in and uh, be unlike Zach Huberty and feel like that you have to watch. Because I don't think you do, but hey, he does, and that's okay too. So, if you had, if you had an option, Rick, would you watch Seat Time or listen to Seat Time? Uh, I love to watch it. You love to watch it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's because Steven's so just downright sexy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, it is. It's the beard. Uh, what is this, Rick Max Cooler Nolan? Oh no, that's is that a nickname. A, um... No, the max cooler goes on your rear brake. You ever lose your rear brakes on your bike before? Oh yes. Yeah, it's I ride a KTM. Keep, of course I have. It's yeah, it's to help cool your rear brakes. Oh. It's, uh, I need just, one of those at the bar too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when I start high kicking, bring out the max cooler. That guy needs to calm down. I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> All right, that's okay. All right, remember. Seat Time live every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Whether there's good stuff to talk about or not, because you know what, we're gonna make it good. So tune tune in to Seat Time. The online show for the off-road enthusiast. And what do we do? We always enjoy a pint full of awesome. So we want you to do the same thing. All right. Thanks, everybody. Peace.